you know, obviously we've turned the page on Michigan State. Uh, you know, for me, coming out of that game and now that we've had a chance to kind of watch it and, and, and flush it, you know, the big thing for me that jumps out is that you can do almost everything right and still not get what you, you, you think you've earned or, or deserved. You know, you, when you win the turnover battle, uh, I think three to one, when you look at uh, on offense, we, we chart what we call our margin of error, and it was one of the lowest margin of errors we've had. I think we were at 5.8% 5 5 of the plays had a self-inflicted wound, which means we played pretty cleanly. Uh, but the thing that jumped out, and this is where, you know, when, when we talk about you can do everything right, we had a good week of practice, we did everything right, but that's the one thing about the game of football is that there are no guarantees, uh, you know, and, and unfortunately, you know, there's no money back guarantees that you do everything right, I'm going to stand in front of you here today and we'll be 2-0. and we're not. We're one and one. And so the lesson that I feel like we have have to take from it, you know, I talk about the jump from week one to week two and what it would look like. And, and here's what, what jumps out to me, how we, how, how resilient we will be uh, going into this season. I mean, to take a loss this early against, again, a, a team, Michigan State, uh, I said that we gave it away. You know what? They took it. They took the victory because they made the plays. That quarterback made some big throws. Uh, he made the plays when they needed to be made, and we didn't. And so one of the things that that I've talked to the team about is that you know what strategy, you know, plus execution don't always equals results because it's the ownership of the plus in between the strategy and the execution, the coaches and the players, where we've got to make the right decision as coaches and own it, and they've got to make the plays as players and own it. And I think. Watching how they responded yesterday on a Monday, some disappointment, some guys that are a little upset. Uh, credit to Michigan State, they took the victory. And for us, uh, as we move forward, how quickly, how intelligently, and how efficiently we move by this, because for those that have been around here, you know, when you look, we've lost one and it's become two, three, and four. And that's something that, you know, as I told our team, it's going to be how we respond rather than how we react. So. Excited about the opportunity that UVA coming in offers us. Uh, I know Tony very well, Coach Elliott, uh, a friend in the profession. Uh, we've competed against each other during his time at Clemson and me at Bama. We got to know each other pretty closely but through the work of the National Coalition for Minority Football Coaches that, that, that I started. And he, was, he came through that program and, and, and is a guy that has his team 2-0. Big come from behind victory against Wake Forest. Uh, they were down a couple scores in the fourth quarter. Put a gutsy 12-play drive together. Uh, their defense made some plays at the end to, 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 to have a come from behind victory on the road. And they're sitting at 2-0. and um, Anybody that's been around here long enough understands the, 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 the longest game, that the, long, the team that we've played the longest of any team. So with the regional rivalry, having been in the ACC together, uh, there's some, some natural commonalities among the two opponents. But I can tell you, I expect Charlottesville, uh, it's, I expect it to be loud. I expect them to be excited because, again, they've got their team with some momentum coming off of a big road victory. It'll be our first test on the road uh, together. And, and I'm excited about getting down there and uh, having a chance to compete. Um, our game captains this week, Tommy King, Basote, Dante Trader, and then uh, Billy Edwards will serve as our game captains as we head down to UVA. And with that, I'll open it up to whatever questions. Mike, UVA is coming off a huge win on the road in the conference. Anthony Calandre put up huge numbers. Malachi Fields a threat as well. After how your defense played this past Saturday, what sort of challenges does the UVA passing game present your club? How do you? Yeah, I mean, one, you know, their quarterback, I think he had his kind of coming out a year ago when we played him. He, he replaced the quarterback that started the game for him. And he came in, and this guy kind of has some Talia Tungavailoa skill set. He's a guy that we have to contain. Uh, he runs around and he extends plays. He throws the ball really well. Um, and, and you're right, the, the Malachi, the receiver number eight, uh, a, a threat. And then they've, the slot guy that transferred in, number 11, a, another threat. The thing that jumps out for us is, you know, last week's game, the big plays are what the difference in the game was. So for us, how do we minimize the big plays? And that's where, when I say strategy plus execution, that's coaches and players, the work inside is, is what's got to happen, which is to limit the big plays. We've got to find a way to contain the quarterback. Um, you know, defensively, they are a talented team. They've got a freshman All-American linebacker, their front uh, seven, you know, really, really strong, heavy-handed guys. So 
uh, be a great challenge for us, but I can tell you that the work will get done this week um, by our team just because of the player-led culture that, that's been created. And, and what I, I like most is what I saw yesterday, just how quickly, effectively, and how intelligently these guys are ready to respond. Hey, Coach. Hey. Um, this three straight years now where um, you guys have lost as a home favorite to a Big Ten team, Purdue, Illinois, and, and then Michigan State, and you won or tied the turnover battle in all three of those games. Um, why do you think that those games continuously or in those three have seemingly gone against you guys and, and you haven't been able to pull it out in kind of those tight you know, conference games that, like you said, it feels like you guys are doing enough to win, but ultimately you're not? Yeah, we haven't. We ultimately we haven't. Not if we not we haven't. It, it goes back to, uh, and I think I said it Saturday. I own it as the head coach. But at some point you got to go take the victory. I mean, it's not just words when I say that nobody's going to give it to us. I mean, I, t I think I said this last Tuesday. Michigan State is a program that has been part of the status quo, really talented. And so for anybody to think that it would be easy. Um, for anybody to think because we declare we want to compete for championships that it would be easy for anybody to think that if you do all the work, win the turnover battle, and do everything right, that you're guaranteed to win, that's not how it works. Um, so as I said, Michigan State took it. We had opportunities to win the game on the field on offense. We had a chance to win it on defense. We had a chance to win it on special teams. Um, and that's what the plus part is. Strategy plus execution equals results. So we all got to do our work, and that's me as a play caller, me as a, the head coach who makes decisions in game, the players and their ability to make the plays that are there to be made. And, and Michigan State did a better job. But you know what? Uh, the resiliency and how we respond is, it will be the, the, the secret sauce for what this season is about. Hey, Mike, back here. Sean, what's up? Good to see you. Uh, that leads me into my question. I was going to ask about resilience. You mentioned it at the top. You just mentioned it again. What does resilience look like in your mind as you hit the field on Saturday night from your guys? What, like, what, what does that entail? It, it details not being distracted because of a, a setback. It, it, it means owning and, and the fire, the adversity that we face, we will be forged because we've gone through it. And we've gone through it together. I mean, that's the good thing. And, you know, that's kind of what we've built. You know, I'd be, telling, I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you I'm disappointed that we didn't find a way to win that game. And, and just like I think Sam said earlier, I mean, it's very similar to Purdue two years ago, very similar to Illinois a year ago. And to me, that's the part from a strategy standpoint. I've got to own and say, hey, what do I need to do? What buttons do I need to push to figure out how to get our players to make that play when it needs to be made? Because you know what? The team in green and white did that on Saturday. And you know, our guys are, are resilient, though. But what it looks like is not being distracted, uh, not losing our focus on we still got a, a lot of football left to be played. And we got a good team. Like since Saturday, there's been some criticism about you know the offense, defense, special teams, even coaching. Criticism about coaching and everything, right? <laughs> As, I mean, how do you how does that sit with you when you, when you see that or hear about it? How, how do you deal with that? I don't see it, and I don't hear about it. I haven't responded to very many of my, you know, I get a bunch of text messages. I I, I have a routine too. When when we lose, I don't respond to text messages. I don't get on social media. The only thing I know is when Dustin on the elevator on the way up tells me, hey, there may be some questions about these things. And you know what? Um, you're going to get the authentic answer. So I don't know what's out there. And that's part of staying disciplined in our process of it doesn't matter what, what other people think. It matters what we think and what we do and how we respond. And you know, that's part of, uh, you know, that's, that's what I think is this team's the difference with this team. I think they understand it. As a follow up, can I ask, does it bother you, though, if you hear fans saying this is the same old Maryland team I that we've seen in the past? I'm, I'm, I don't hear it. I, I really insulate myself. When I come to Jones Hill House, I went to church. I drove in. I was in that building until 1 on Sunday night. I got home. I woke up. I was back in early. I got home last night at 1 o'clock. And very, I, I wouldn't know what a fan says other than, as I said, my, my guy Dustin does know. And he kind of, I guess they're mad at me right now. And as they should be, I'm a little disappointed myself. Hey, Coach, Ty leads all receivers in the nation in receiving yards. How are you able to kind of utilize his skill set uh, and keep building upon what he's been able to do through the first two weeks while still being able to maybe establish the run and let Roman go off a little bit? Yeah, I mean, that's the critical for us is balance. And again, you know, when people say let Roman go off or to be able to establish the run, 
every week as we prepare and put plans together, you know, the goal is to be able to efficiently do both of those things. And you know what, a week ago we ran it for over 250 yards uh, uh, against some stuff and made some big plays. Uh, but the, the consistency up front is what we're, we're working to continue to do, uh, figure it out. Um, we had some growing pains a week ago, uh, a really tough front, a front seven that, you know, heavy handed guys, uh, Big Ten football. I mean, it was a, a very early uh, segue into Big Ten play for our team and, and to be able to, you know, deal with that early, uh, be able to make the necessary corrections, uh, the necessary corrections. I expect us to be able to, to, to establish the ability to do both run and throw efficiently as we continue to work through the season. Hey, Mike. George. Um, this, I know you're, you don't control the schedule and everything like that, I preface it, but um, the last of a two-year series against Virginia, I know Virginia Tech's coming up in a few seasons, but this will be the last time you play Virginia for the foreseeable future. Is that a game and a rivalry you'd like, you'd like to see kept from both sides of the Potomac in the future? You know what, I, I, with the non-conference stuff, a lot of these non-conference stuff, I am involved with that piece of it. The conference schedule is the part when it shows up and all those things. And I, I've, I think I've shared my philosophy. I've talked to Colleen, my, my boss, who I work with to do the scheduling. You know, I like the regional, regional rivalries. I like a, a Virginia, a West Virginia, VTech, a old ACC foe. Um, those are good for Maryland. They're good for our program. Um, they create some excitement because of some of the past. You know, obviously UVA being a regional rivalry. We've got guys from their state. They've got guys from our state. Uh, anytime we have a chance to, to keep some of these uh, these games alive, because like I said, it's the longest game that we've played against a, a, an opponent over the years. Uh, you know, I think it's good for us. And you've been down there plenty of times, Scott Stadium, with Coach Freegan and hitting those teams in the early 2000s in the ACC. Have you been able to kind of get your guys ready for what they're going to expect in Charlottesville this weekend? You know what, as I've gotten older, I've learned that talking about what to expect in the stadium, I mean, I, I just got to get us ready to play. I got to get us ready to take care of the plus in the middle. You know, me create the strategies for us, offense, defense, special teams, the players, go execute it, and then the work in between. And, and knowing that there's no money back guarantees on Saturday that we're going to get the victory. Hey, Coach. What's up, man? Um, so there was some the secondary struggled at times Saturday. Would there be anything schematically or personnel-wise that will be changing, or is it just kind of a matter of letting the young guys grow and get better? Yeah, man, you know, we've done dealt with these growing pains. You know, Deontay Banks, who was a first-round draft pick as a true freshman, he had rough days a couple times, too. And I'm going to just tell you, you know, we got to keep the ball in front of us, obviously. I mean, you can't, you know, play good defense. I think we gave up almost. 300 yards on five passes. So when you talk about explosives, and and they could couldn't have happened at the worst times for us. And so what we've got to do as coaches is go back to the the drawing board and make sure that we have talented players on the outside. They're young. So how do we help them grow without necessarily without mitigating the risk of what happened on Saturday? And I think that's the part where we got to keep somebody over the top. We got to keep somebody in the middle of the field, or sometimes just play man coverage and let these guys that they're talented enough to run around and cover people and you know we, we, we've looked at the things that happen um, on, on Saturday and keeping the ball in front of us the, 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 the outcome of this game was dictated by who made the most big plays and, and they executed and created the bigger plays. Hey, Coach, one more. Um, you mentioned after the spring game I that I can't hear you saying. <laughs> you mentioned after the spring game that Isaac Bunyan um, had pro potential as an offensive lineman. And what specifically led you to kind of have that faith in him and belief? And how have you evaluated how he's played through the first two games? Yeah, you know, Ike plays with pad level. Um, you know, the big thing up front is, is, is movement and strength. And Isaac is a strong guy, I'm one of the stronger guys in our program. Uh, has the ability to play pad on a pad, has good short area quickness, uh, has the ability to to create movement. You know, one of the things the way we play D-line compared to some people is we do surface blocks. We, Our goal is to keep people off the linebackers on the, on the D-line. Uh, and then there are times where we allow them to, to pass rush. Well, Ike has shown the ability of his leverage, his strength, and his power. Um, and then he's smart. You know, and, and to me, you know, he has the size to hold up. I'd say uh, he's played above average. Uh, I mean, because when you think about it, I mean, this is his second game playing left guard. 
in, in, in the four, last four years. And, you know, he went up against a, a, a solid front a week ago. He had his struggles, as we all did, coaches, players. And, you know, I think what you'll continue to see, though, with Ike is how he responds. And he's a good football player, and I still feel he has a chance to help us tremendously this year, especially at that left guard position. Hey, Coach. Uh, I know you talked about uh, Anthony Calandria, the, the passing attack, and Malachi Fields and whatnot, but uh, Calandria, his uh, dual threat ability, his ability on the ground, um, do you, I guess how much of a threat is that? And I guess do you feel like the defense kind of benefits just from facing him uh, from year prior? Well, he was their leading rusher a year ago, um, and he, a lot of it was not necessarily designed Q runs. These are runs. The scariest runs are, for me are when the quarterback drop backs the throw and we are in man coverage or we're, we're underneath things, and now he has uh, the open space. And he's one of those guys that we've got to contain, rush him, meaning keep him in the pocket, keep him within the confines of the box, and make him win from the box. Because if you let him start running around and extending plays, uh, it's a tough cover for anybody, whether it's a freshman or a first round draft pick. Uh, to cover guys for long periods of time, it just doesn't work that way. So we've got to affect the quarterback. And then we've got to find a way to be, you know, to be close to number eight. I mean, him and number 11 are two talented players. They find ways to get and create opportunities for him, very similar to what we do with Ty. So on the defensive side, we got to find a way to contain the quarterback and, and keep the ball in front of us this week. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys.